faculty, graduates, family, and friends. As you know, this semester forced us to go into a lockdown, if you will, with virtual format due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Lectures, meetings were all done online. We were very fortunate to get our clinical sites and able to finish all of our clinical hours. We're so grateful to our community partners for that. The officers and the committee chairs came together in our weekly meetings and planned out multiple arms to the pinning ceremony in hopes that we would be able to do it in person. Unfortunately, with the surges and the upswing in admissions and incidences of the pandemic, that was not possible. And so we are doing a virtual again this semester. Thankfully, we are able to coordinate this semester with doing an actual pinning part to this. So that, that we're very grateful for. For those of you who have concerns, please be assured that we have done all of the mandates, the physical separation, everybody's masked, we have the hand gel, we have everyone separated by time, coming in and out at different times. So we have physical separation, both in the waiting area as well as in this area where the filming is taking place. And if we could do it, we would probably have hand sanitizer in misters and really take care of everybody. So having said all of that, I would like to welcome you. I'll introduce myself. I'm Jamie Mendiola, and I was asked by the class to MC their ceremony. And it is my honor to do that. We are here to celebrate the pinning ceremony for the 106th RN graduating class of Bakersfield College. This is the capstone semester of a rigorous two-year program. It is culminating in this pinning ceremony, so we really hope you enjoy it. Normally, I would introduce the Dean of Instruction, who is the Director of All Nursing Programs at Bakersfield College, Dean Carla Gard. Unfortunately, she's in quarantine because a child is symptomatic and awaiting testing and all of that. So she extends a huge congratulations and so sorry that she's not able to be here. Wanted me also to convey a, a thank you, big thank you to our college president, Sonia Christian, and all of our community partners who allowed us to do their clinicals, our students' clinicals in all of their sites, inpatient and outpatient all over town. We would have never been able to get through this semester without that, so thank you for that. When we come to a pinning ceremony, the history of the pin is a big piece of this. When students go through the various levels of education, there's graduations at the different levels. When it comes to college level in a nursing program, the pinning ceremony is actually one of the bigger pieces, if you will, uh, simply because of the profession. When we look at uh, nursing programs across the United States, each has their own unique pin with its own color, with its own picture, whatever is unique to that program. For Bakersfield College, it has a shield on it, the shield representing protection, protection for ourselves, protection for our patients. And in our profession, we take that very seriously, protecting our patients in every aspect that we can. Patient safety is paramount for nursing. At this time, I would like to introduce the speakers. The class selects speakers every ceremony, and our um, class this semester selected for faculty speaker, Professor Alicia Loken. Hi, I'm Alicia Loken. I had the pleasure of teaching these students in third semester during their RM program, uh, and I was invited to be their faculty speaker. I would like to thank the students for inviting me to speak on behalf of the faculty. And on behalf of the faculty, I would like to be the first to congratulate the students on completing their RN program. We are so proud of you, and we're so excited to have you guys joining us in our profession as registered nurses. So I was kind of having trouble figuring out what to talk about. We have so much going on in the world right now with the pandemic, um, politics, with um, policing issues in the United States. There's so many different things going on that it was hard to kind of narrow down and, and find um, something that I could share with you that would be meaningful. Um, so what I did was I went back and I kind of thought about what made this class special. Um, because to me, you guys are very special. Like you hold a place in my heart that not every class does. And I wanted to try to capture the reason for that. Um, so I thought back about why I became a nurse. And I initially didn't know that I was gonna go into nursing. I really, um, I thought I was gonna be a veterinarian. <laughs> that was kind of my goal was that I'm gonna be a veterinarian. I thought that all through grammar school, junior high, uh, into high school, I started working for a vet in high school 
and I realized that I loved animals too much to see them suffer and to have to try to work on them. So I went to college kind of not really knowing what I was going to do and like most uh, students in college I kind of wavered, right? I, I changed my major three or four times. I was an econ major initially, then I was astrophysics, um, then I was an English major at UCLA. I just kind of was a little bit lost and wasn't sure what my place was. Um, in the course of going to college, I started working for the police department at UCLA as a CSO, and then ultimately um, at UCLA Medical Center, and also for 20th Century Fox doing executive protection for them uh, while I was in school. So when I was working at UCLA in, at, for the police department, I was primary response to all the criminal activity that occurred there. Uh, so I went to shootings, I went to stabbings, I went to robberies, I went to burglaries, I went to domestic violence calls. Um, in retrospect, that was kind of crazy, considering we were unarmed. We had, you know, asps and we had um, pepper spray, but we weren't armed in any other way. Uh, and my husband always tells me, he's like, you, that I walk a fine line between um, being brave and, and being stupid. And he said, sometimes he doesn't know what side I'm on. And, and looking back at that job, I'm like, yeah, that's probably where it started. Like, probably not the best idea. But that's what I did. And so I decided I was going to be a cop. That was my goal, that I'm going to just finish my degree and whatever I can get my degree in the fastest, and that was going to be English, and that I'm going to be a police officer. So I kept working at the at UCLA Medical Center for the police department there. Um, and I vividly remember when my mind changed and I decided that instead of being a police officer, I was going to be a nurse. So I left UCLA as a student. I went and enrolled in a community college, very similar to Bakersfield College, and I started a nursing program there. I became a nurse. But looking back on my life, I know that I was always headed towards nursing. I just didn't realize it. My whole life, things had been happening that pointed me in the direction of nursing. I was born to be a nurse. That's what I was meant to do. And I, I think that many of you out there that are listening to this are thinking about your student who's graduating today and you're thinking, so were they, that they were also born to be a nurse. And some of them realized it very early and some of them are like me and they didn't realize it until later. Something changed the trajectory of their lives and made them aware. When I was 14 years old, and this is kind of the one thing I think about when I think, God, this is where I was always supposed to be. When I was 14, I had a boyfriend and he had a little sister who was five years old who was mauled by a dog. A neighbor's dog jumped up and, and bit her in the face. And both he and his mother, um, were absolutely hysterical, um, essentially. Me, 14 year old girl, I go, I pick up the kid, we call the paramedics, we take her to the hospital. Um, they're gonna take her back to, to suture her face and make sure that she's taken care of. And he and his mother couldn't be back there with them. They said, I just, they both of them were like, we just can't do it, we can't be back there because the little girl was just screaming and screaming and crying. Um, so I went. So I was 14 and I went back there with her and they put her in the papoose so that she couldn't struggle and they gave her something to help her calm down and they um, you know, anesthetized her face and they sutured her up and, and she was fine. Uh, when I think about that, I, I realized that I was already kind of in that nursing mindset at that point. I, instead of running away from things that were scary or running away from danger or shrinking back, I moved towards them. And I think that's one of the qualities that makes great nurses and that's one of the qualities that I see in these graduates. Okay, when I look at, when I think about this graduating class, when I, I mentioned earlier that there's something about them that makes them so special to me, it's that I think this group, I actually watched them become nurses in third semester. And I'll probably tear up a little bit because I do feel strongly about them. And because I have three teenagers at home that I've been locked up with for eight months, so that may be part of the tears also. Um, but I watched them become nurses in third semester. And this may be something that you guys don't know out there. This group of students in the middle of third semester, well, early third semester, we kind of heard there's this thing called COVID out there. It's in China, then it was kind of in Europe, then it was moving towards the United States, then we were hearing about it on the East Coast. Um, but it hadn't gotten to us yet. By February, we kind of knew it was coming. Um, I remember even making a PowerPoint that kind of had all the factual information about COVID on it. Uh, to provide to the students because we were already getting lots of disinformation from you know politicians and from um, conflicting information from different medical groups and science groups and that kind of thing so so we made a powerpoint form in february that provided all kind of the factual information that we had available at that time and then in early march 
They said that we're going all virtual learning uh, because COVID was here. It was in the hospitals. We had patients that were sick with it. Same time, the hospitals where all of these students were doing clinical rotations, um, some of them said that they could no longer allow students to have access because they were concerned for the students and because they didn't have guidance from corporate. Some of them continued to have students. Some of them said we can't. So essentially, our nursing program came to a standstill uh, at that point. We were still able to offer classes, but we weren't sure what to do with the students clinically to make sure that they completed. Luckily, we had a couple of facilities that, that kind of stood up and said, we'll take everyone. Kern Medical said, I'll take every student that you can give us. We'll get every single one of them because they knew that we were gonna need nurses out in the community, that it wouldn't work for us to go ahead and stop training new nurses who are gonna be out there. So what we did was Dr. Harding and I created a new clinical schedule um, that only used the hospitals where they were allowed to go. Um, and we contacted the students and it was gonna be voluntary. And we told the students, you can volunteer to complete your clinical hours. It's scary out there. We don't know exactly what's happening with COVID. We don't know how contagious it is at that point. We didn't know if we were gonna have adequate PPE. We didn't know if, um, you know, if they were gonna get exposed to it out there or not. Okay, we didn't know how dangerous it was for each individual person based on what was going on. We, we didn't have a lot of information in March about what was going on with this disease. So we asked them all, how many of you would like to go into the clinical settings if you're offered the opportunity to complete your education? 100% of them said yes. 100% of the students volunteered to put themselves at risk and to go and take care of these patients in the hospital where COVID was actively occurring. I was more afraid for the students, I think, than they were. Um, I had students who were pregnant. We had a student who was waiting for a kidney transplant. Um, even those students said yes, that they wanted to get back into the clinical setting to provide for their community and to finish their education so that they could get out there. To me, that is the mark of a real nurse. It's someone who moves towards the danger, it's someone who moves towards the risk with the hopes of helping others. And this group of students did that. The other thing that they did that makes them so special to me is that Dr. Harding and I were so worried about them, right? Because we're nurses, we were worried about them. Some of them lived with their grandparents. Like I said, some of them were immunocompromised. Some of them um, were scared, you know, they were having problems with anxiety. They had kids who were now gonna be at home with them that they're trying to take care of while they're trying to manage their educations. So we were so worried about them. And then we were having to change their schedules over and over and over again as different hospitals were making different rules about who could be there and where. And as different hospitals and agencies were approaching us and asking us, you know, can you provide students to do door checks at this emergency room so that we can use our staff to take care of patients on the COVID units? Um, so we, we probably changed their clinical schedule five times in the course of two or three weeks. And I remember Dr. Harding and I talking over and over again about these poor students are so stressed already. They're already having so much anxiety and we're constantly throwing change at them. And I'm like, they're going to hate us. They're going to be so upset. You know, we're going to push them over the edge. And instead of any complaints, what we got from these students were text messages and emails thanking us for our hard work and asking us if we were okay. And to me, that is the mark of a nurse, someone who sets themselves aside in order to care for others. And these students were doing that in third semester already. So in my mind, yes, they're completing their education today. Yes, they're getting pinned today, but they became nurses a semester and a half ago. It's just a matter of getting them out there so that they can practice and help our community now. To the graduates, what I wanna tell you is the things that I think of when I think of a nurse, what are the, the characteristics of a nurse? One is what we already talked about. You assume risk, you move towards the danger, in the hopes of helping others. You put others before yourself. But there's a couple other characteristics I think of too. One is a wicked sense of humor, okay? We have to maintain a sense of humor. Um, often it's a little off color, you know, for those of us that aren't nurses, but we have to maintain that. Um, the other is resiliency. I think nurses have to have resiliency. All of you have demonstrated that you have resiliency as well because you have suffered through the beginning of COVID, through this COVID pandemic, you've moved from face-to-face -to, -face to online um, learning. You have, have dealt with these situations in the clinical setting and you have persevered and completed today. Run towards, move towards danger, 
assume risk, sense of humor, resiliency. Okay, those are the attitudes that you need to have as a nurse. You have skills and knowledge as well that you've been provided, but those are the main attitudes that you need to have. My, my advice to you is that you remember that you have those things already. You have those tools in your tool belt. If you didn't have them, you wouldn't have gotten here today. My, my second piece of advice for the new graduates is that you build on those. You take those characteristics that you have innately and you foster them and you feed them and you nurture them so that they grow. Don't lose your sense of humor. Don't lose your sense of humanity. Don't lose your interest and your willingness to move towards the danger or move towards the risk rather than moving away from it. If you can do those things, you will move out there into the community and be as big an asset to the community as you have been to Bakersfield College. So congratulations to the class of 2020. We are so proud of you. We know that you're gonna be um, out there practicing as a nurse and be so good for our community, to be so good for our patients. Uh, and we look forward to working with you as peers, uh, not just as instructors. Thank you very much and congratulations. For the student speaker this semester, the class selected their class president, Andrew Dutton. Today, those separated by the circumstances pre presented to us by the ongoing pandemic, we come together unified in the achievement of being members of the 106th graduating class of Bakersfield College's registered nursing program. For the past two years, as we have shared this experience with one another, we have been privileged to witness the development of each, each other's development as people, as students, and as future registered nurses. It's an experience as it allowed us to develop a bond of kinship that would have been impossible to predict on that first day in fundamentals. There was excitement and anxiousness then, and the fear of the uncertainty of how the next two years of our lives would be impacted by this journey we were only just beginning. To say it was difficult would be an understatement. It always seemed that no matter how many successes we had or accomplishments we met, just as we were cresting the peak of one obstacle, another would present itself. And for many of us, this has been the most difficult time of our lives. But let's not reflect on the stresses of long caffeinated nights spent working on, on process papers and cramming for exams, or the individual sacrifices and struggles we have had to make in our daily lives to get to where we are today. But rather, let's reflect on the things that have made today possible and that have given value to our time together. Since day one, we have, had, we have been blessed with nothing but encouragement and support from this amazing faculty. There are not enough words in any language to sufficiently express the gratitude that we owe to Dean Gard, our professors, our clinical instructors, and the amazing staff of Allied Health. Time and again, they have demonstrated the unrelenting commitment to our education, development, and sec success as nursing students. Perhaps the best example of this commitment is the effort they put forth when the onset of COVID-19 threatened to delay our progress in the program. As changes came quickly, they faced the challenge of transitioning us to virtual learning and securing clinical placement, all while keeping the health and the health of our community in mind. It wasn't always smooth, and there were certainly many frustrations along the way. But our being able to celebrate this moment of achievement is evidence of their support and the support of our clinical sites, who are also very deserving of our gratitude for allowing us into their facilities to gain experience and develop our skills in patient care. We must also acknowledge the support we have received from our loved ones. They have shared in our sacrifices and though they may not have always completely understood the struggles that life as a nursing student brings, our successes, our failures, and our growth have been as much theirs as they are our own. To those loved ones directly, wherever you are, know that you have made a great and positive impact, not only in the life of your graduating nursing student, but in all of our lives. Because, as you have so selflessly offered your support to see us succeed, we have been available to support one another. We have laughed, cried, celebrated, and commiserated together all along this humbling journey. But any time we may have had 
doubted ourselves or our abilities, we were always there to lean on each other. Whether it be from not getting the exam results we wanted or being uncertain of our skills, each of us from the beginning has been so quick to offer encouragement and to inspire the others to keep pushing, to keep moving along. And now as we celebrate this wonderful achievement, let's reflect on the words of Professor Kennedy. We began as novice nursing students. We knew nothing then. And over the past two years, as we gained knowledge, skills, and experience, we have become veteran nursing students. Moving forward, as we prepare to begin the next portion of our journey as registered nurses, where once again we will be the anxious and, and excited novice. Let's continue to encourage and inspire one another to learn, to grow, and to succeed. In the words of A.A. A. Milne, speaking as Christopher Robin, remember, you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. And now we would like you to enjoy the actual pinning of our graduates.
At the end of the actual pinning part of the ceremony, it is tradition to have the Nightingale Pledge and a nurse's prayer. For this ceremony, the class has selected Professor Beanie to recite the Nightingale Pledge. First off, I'd like to say congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. If you would please follow along in your program with the Nightingale Pledge, I'm going to read it now. I solemnly pledge myself before God and in the presence of this assembly to pass my life in purity and to practice my profession faithfully. I will abstain from whatever is deleterious and mischievous and will not take or willingly administer any harmful drug. I will do all in my power to maintain and elevate the standard of my profession and will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping and all family affairs coming my knowledge in the practice of my calling. With loyalty will I endeavor to aid the physician in his work and devote myself to the welfare of those committed to my care. Thank you guys. For this ceremony, this class has selected Professor Debbie Kennedy to recite the nurse's prayer. Hello all, I am uh, just wanting to take some time to first congratulate you on your um, very challenging four semesters and I'm so excited that you have graduated and you're moving forward. So congratulations each and every one of you and I look forward to working with you and seeing you on the nursing units in the future. Now as I uh, recite the prayer, would you please bow your heads with me. Lord, please help me bring comfort where there is pain, courage where there is despair, acceptance when the, near, the end is near, and a gentle touch with tenderness, patience, and love. Let me dedicate my life today to the care of those who come my way. Let me touch one with a healing hand in the gentle art for which I stand. And then tonight, when the day is done, let me rest in peace if I've helped just one. Amen. Throughout the two years, the students take many pictures in various aspects of their clinicals, their theory, their community services, keep in mind all without patients in view in the interest of HIPAA and confidentiality, and they've put together a video to show you a little bit of what they've been through in the last two years of their nursing program, so please enjoy.
take our own chance When the road is long When you're feeling low With every breath Don't forget how far you've come When it's late at night When you're all alone I'll lift you up I could be your helium Said your life, said your life will never be the same. Hey there, champion, bet you're gonna win this fight. And I'm here for you through good and bad, right by your side. Sometimes you can lose it all overnight, but everything's gonna be alright. When the road is long, when you're feeling low, with every breath, don't forget how far you've come. When it's late at night, when you're all alone. Your helium. Your helium. I could be your helium. Won't you free your mind, free your mind like a parachute? Yeah, I know it's hard, I know it's hard when you face the truth. Hey, that friend of mine, you say it feels like you're out of time. But I promise you, I promise you, we'll make it out alive Sometimes you can lose it all overnight But everything's gonna be alright When the road is long, when you're feeling low With every breath, don't forget how far you've come When it's late at night, when you're all alone I'll lift you up, I could be your helium Feeling low, yeah. Don't forget, it's darkest before the dawn. Just like a bass, needs a drum. I'll lift you up, I could be your helium. The class has a few gifts that they would like to present. They're going to be presented by the class president, Andrew Detton, and one of our committee chairs, Brenda Padilla. On behalf of the graduates, we would like to present our class photo to the department. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, this is awesome, and we just really appreciate this. On behalf of the, de the nursing department, we thank you. And we'll hang this proudly in the office for a year. And after that, it will go down and be um, an infamy down in the skills lab. Thank you. Professor Debbie, on behalf of the class, we would like to present you with these gifts. Oh, thank you so much. On behalf of the faculty, we thank you. And we will make sure that every faculty member gets this. Thank you so much. Thank you. And additionally, with, once we get the rest of the invoices in, we would like to present the rest of our balance to the incoming fourth semester students, as well as to the skills lab. Uh, for however they see fit. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you from all of us. Thank you. This concludes our pinning ceremony for the Bakersfield College Fall 2020 RN graduates. Thank you to those who participated in permitting this ceremony to come to fruition. The class officers and committees, you all did a great job, particularly Bridget Rodriguez and her committee for the decorations throughout the grounds. They look beautiful. In particular, we'd also like to thank our photographers, Jonah and Lindsay Long, as always a great job. Congratulations, graduates.